Thank you to members of the Committee on Corporations for considering this important legislation before you today. My name is Michael Beauregard. I'm the president of the Young Democrats of Rhode Island. We are a civic engagement and engagement organization committed to promoting the voices and values of young people in our state. Uh, I'm here today to testify on, on behalf of two bills, uh, H7422, Representative Regenberg's bill, and H7076, Representative Kennedy's bill. Um, you're going to hear many strong arguments from a wide array of positions, but I'm going to focus on the youth perspective today. Um, as a millennial, we've grown up on the internet. Sociologists refer to us as being called what's, di uh, what's called digital natives, or people born or brought up during the age of digital technology, and or, therefore we're familiar with computers and the internet from a very early age. It goes beyond that, though. It really goes to an uh, innate part of our being. By spending so much time throughout our lives investing and in expressing over the internet, effectively some amount of our identity gets wrapped up in there. Uh, with the exception of the increasing number of people who can't access the internet. So what would happen if all of a sudden that were to go away? Or a company could determine what I could and couldn't express about myself? Or if it became so costly that many people, many more people couldn't engage in it? What would happen to young people? Uh, so much of our identity is just tied up in our growth and our discovery, is tied up in the internet. Um, and I think it will really create a separate but equal internet, one where there's the interneted and the unconnected. Um, and that could have a huge impact on our society. Um, it's hard to fathom what that would look like because we spent most of our existence in an internet where these protection has been in place and it's something that we cherish very uh, in highly. Um, information and education is a key component to, to this um, and the impact that it could have on economic growth is truly worrisome. But it's one we can avoid. By establishing laws that ensure state contractors and subcontractors receive net neutral service, we can make sure, we can lead by example and stand with the 25 other states that are taking this initiative. Um, it's our hope that by forcing internet service providers to abide by net neutral services here in the state for subcontractors and contractors, that they will also continue to offer that protection for the consumers as they continually said they would. Um, we also want to make sure that this critical protection is put in place before we lose the, what we have right now April, on April 23rd. Um, while we encourage, uh, the Young Democrats encourage passage of both pieces of legislation, uh, we strongly uh, prefer the specificity of definitions in H7422, uh, which particularly uh, addresses some of the practices internet service providers have been known to violate, including paid prioritization, blocking, throttle, throttling, and unreasonable interference or discrimination. Uh, oh, sorry, just in, in conclusion, if we fail to protect net neutrality, all Rhode Islanders will pay more and get less, so incredibly profitable companies can make more money. I highly encourage members of this committee to vote passage for both bills. Thank you.